Welcome, we'll start with the 7th chapter for class 11th NCRT Economics. In this chapter, we will talk about employment, the growth, the informalization and the process of formalization that has taken place over the years. Now, when we talk about the initial time when you had the industrial revolution that started, you had the factories that were located in the cities. So, people from the rural countryside had to move to the cities in order to find employment opportunities. However, with the advent of technology, what happened was even in the smaller rural vicinities, this technology started to percolate. So people could have their own small unit in their own houses. So household units, small scale units started to come into existence. So that was how there was a kind of change in the employment pattern that was registered in the initial times. Now, uh, what was the benefit of having a kind of employment for a person? It brings in a kind of uh, earning for a living. It brings in self-worth. It helps you to relate meaningfully to others and contribute to national income. Now, Mahatma Gandhi insisted upon that training and education are indeed important for the development of the nation as a whole. If we talk about the nation, we have, let's say, the exports and the imports. Now, obviously, if the exports are higher than imports, we have a net earning, which is positive. However, in the other case, if the imports are more and exports are less, we have a net earning that is negative. So when we say the net earning along with the foreign transactions give you the gross national product and this gross national product basically talks about the economic activities. Now even if a person is temporarily uh, disabled or is uh, ill, even in that condition he is contributing something to the economy. But the overall contribution in that case would decline. Even in the same fa fashion, we talk about the women which are uh, employed basically in the household work, which is not counted towards the real workforce, but that is again a kind of uh, employment that's being done. So you have the cooking, fetching water, burning fuel woods, participating in the farm labor, but this is all not counted in the real workforce that we analyze. So of the real workforce, we say 70% account for male population and then we calculate the worker to the total population ratio and which is known as worker population ratio. So we find out the total worker divided by the total population. Now this total population is the total number of people which are residing in a region and usually we say we have around 39 workers per 100 persons and this varies from 36 in rural to 40 in urban. However, when it comes to female employment, it's a kind of reverse scenario where in urban area you have less female employment with only 50 females per 100 urban females. However, in rural areas, it's 25. So for the rural areas, the employment is much higher. Now, when we talk about the kinds of employment, we broadly classify it under three heads. The first is self-employment. So a person having his own small enterprise, his own small business would be classified under self-employment. So it contributes to nearly 52% of the workforce commonly seen in the rural and the urban areas both. Casual wage laborers are those which are casually engaged in certain kind of activity and they are not kind of permanent workforce for that uh, activity. This accounts for 30% of the workforce and these casual laborers are predominantly seen in the rural farm uh, farmhouse or the rural areas. The next is regular salaried employees. This is predominantly seen in the urban areas. So the person is engaged with a kind of bigger enterprise, a bigger company and he is considered a regular salaried employee and this regular salaried employee accounts for only 18% of the total workforce. Now, where can the employment take place? So, in, 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 sorry, employment can take place in the various sectors including the primary, secondary and the tertiary sector. Now, if we talk about the 1950s or post-independence, the growth rate of the employment was only 2%, but there was a kind of posi positive GDP growth that was registered. However, when we talk about the period uh, and around the period of 1990s, that was the LPG reforms or the liberalization.
globalization privatization and globalization that took place what happened was the employment growth started to decline suddenly so the employment growth which was at around 2% started to decline but the gdp production or the G gdp uh, grew at a much faster pace so what happened was uh, during that period we registered a jobless growth scenario so there was growth taking place but no active jobs were being generated because of the rising growth or the GDP that was rising during that time. So that became a real issue of concern. Similarly, when we talk about now the industry 4.0, it's again the era of automation. And when we talk about automation, there is a kind of jobless growth again. So that's one of the major focuses that we are uh, trying to bring into light as to what are the scenarios or what are the areas where employment opportunities could be generated. The next is talking about the proportion of share in the agriculture it has declined from 74 percent to 50 percent however the workforce has increased from 11 to 24 percent in the secondary and 15 to 27 percent in the service sector so service sector and the secondary sector now uh, in the uh, in the above section we talked about the three sectors just a brief idea about those so primary sector we have already discussed in 9th and 10th ncrt but uh, again we'll talk about it briefly so primary sector is directly when you are working with nature so you have agriculture mining forestry fishing however secondary is when you are trying to uh, bring in the produce from the primary and uh, process it or manufacture it so manufacturing construction all those go into secondary and then you are trying to provide services so trade transport storage and urban services are all part of the tertiary sector. Again, we have seen that over the period there has been a hike in the number of self-employed and regular employed wages. However, the casual labors have declined over the period. The next is informalization of the workforce. Now, this is a very important issue to be addressed. When we say in an industry, which has more than or a uh, establishment which has more than 10 people in the workforce we say it is a formal sector workforce so a formal sector workforce has to meet with certain guidelines from the government however for the small setups what happens is a person can even work for a specific duration he would not be given any kind of benefits no maternity leaves no uh, accidental leaves and so on so those would be the kind of benefits that would be scrapped off in the informal sector and therefore the quality of employment that's provided in the informal sector or due to informalization is very very poor and that quality is continuously deteriorating if, even if the person is working for more than 10 years or 20 years he won't get the kind of benefits that that a person should have again the comparison of the salaries in the private and the uh, public sector are different so that's again a matter of concern we say of the total population you have 94 percent percent people which lie in informal sector with 69 percent of the male workforce so the male workforce in the informal sector is rather higher uh, the informal sector includes smaller enterprises farmers agriculture people having kind of household enterprise so all those are informal sector and uh, Again, in the informal sector, you also have the non-farm casual activities that is part of it. Uh, this informal sector does not provide a source of regular income. It, is, it does not provide any kind of protection or regulation. Uh, the worker can be dismissed without any compensation that could be given. The technology that's being used is really outdated in these industries. And the accounts are not properly maintained and many of the workers are in a condition that they have to live in the slums. So that's, this, uh, that's the scenario of the informal sector uh, of basically employment in uh, India and abroad. So you have the informalization case study of Ahmedabad that has been talked about. So what happened, Ahmedabad was producing or having more than 60 textile mills with nearly 1.5 lakh workers that were part of it. But there was a kind of uh, drastic closure of the textile mills in the last 10 years and nearly 80,000 permanent workers and 50,000 non-permanent workers lost, lost their job. 
as a result what happened was there was a severe economic recession in the city and the situation of communal rights evolved in the city of Ahmedabad so that's why we require a kind of better formalization of the structure uh, stronger trade unions and labor laws that should be there NSSO uh, that's the National Sample Survey Organization defines unemployment as uh, it's basically the lack of work not working but seeking for the work through employment exchange through intermediaries applying for the pros uh, applying to the prospective employers and looking for job now from where we can collect the data on employment there are three sources first is the report of the census the nsso report on employment and unemployment and the directorate general of employment and training what are the types of unemployment that we talk about so open unemployment is the most common unemployment commonly seen as the open unemployment disguised and seasonal are interesting and important to understand so what is disguised disguised means the people are working on a farm there are actually two people required to work on that farm but how many uh, people are being uh, are serving that farm is five so three people there becomes a disguised unemployment so that's not visible it's appearing that all five of them are contributing to the field but actually the field requires only two persons so that's what is a disguised unemployment on the other hand you have seasonal unemployment seasonal un unemployment means uh, let's say if a farmer is uh, putting up the crops in only during the season of sowing and harvesting you have the actual workforce that is required during the lean months you do not have the workforce that's really required so that becomes the seasonal employment that's required during the sowing or the harvesting season and for the rest of the months it's unemployment so that's basically understanding the seasonal un uh, employment or seasonal unemployment either of those now how can we generate employment opportunities through the Minagra scheme uh, we have talked about 100 days of guaranteed, uh, guaranteed employment in the rural areas so that's one way or one initiative for the unskilled workers to get at least uh, a kind of 100 days of em employment over the 365 days the employment can be direct or indirect government owned steel companies are increasing their output but uh, you have the result in the direct and em uh, employment that is being seen you on the other hand you have the private companies which are purchasing the skill uh, the steel from the government enterprises and this private company would again employ people so the government company would be a kind of direct employment but this private company which is employing would be a kind of uh, secondary or a kind of indirect uh, employment that this private company would be providing because the main source here is this government steel company so that's how we understand this process of direct and indirect employment generation and finally what we need to focus on is we need to focus on better technological development we need to focus on expanding the service sector ruling out any kind of outdated technologies uh, outsourcing the work that is required so uh, whatever work we require if that is being outsourced you can provide employment to many people across the region and there should be a kind of competitive existence so if your uh, economies of scale are good and uh, you can bring in a kind of competitive product then only you can have a survival or a kind of uh, good survival in the market so those are the things that we study under this chapter we'll be continuing with the remaining three chapters of economics and moving on to class 12 soon so stay tuned for further updates in economics have a great day ahead